What's going on my broskies, my name is Toadski back again, here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and welcome back to Lesson Time, the tutorial series where some of your favorite One Piece and One Piece Treasure Cruise content creators are coming together to form a tutorial series to help all of you guys start your One Piece Treasure Cruise journey. Today, this video will aim to teach everyone the basics of powering up your characters in One Piece Treasure Cruise and by this video's conclusion, you should be able to level your characters efficiently and effectively to get them prepared to take on powerful enemies throughout your adventures. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the video. First of all, we need to discuss what is the purpose of powering up your characters. Well, powering up your characters in One Piece Treasure Cruise is vitally important for increasing the chances of success of victory in the adventure. The power-up system in One Piece Treasure Cruise is complex, and there's various different ways you can improve your character, with each component making your character drastically better than the base character that you drop during an adventure or that you pull for during Sugo Fests. Let's just discuss the actual power-up menu. So when you attempt to power up a character in One Piece Treasure Cruise, you'll be greeted with a multiplex of options available to you. And in this video, we'll be diving into how you can utilize these functions to make your characters as strong as possible. Let's take a look at the first option in the power-up menu, which is the level up or EXP. And this is the most fundamental way of powering up a character is increasing their base level. And each character can have their own maximum level that they can reach, and most of which is level 99. However, some characters can have a maximum level of other increments, such as 35, 50, or even 70. In order to level a character's level, you must feed the character EXP materials that can be acquired from most adventures that are available in the game. Initially, you'll find various turtles that can be used as EXP materials, and there's even an adventure that you can clear once per day to acquire some higher rarity turtles to level up your characters as well. However, there are various units that can fulfill this role, like boiled lobsters, for example. Next, let's have a look at Evolve and Super Evolve. So once a character has reached their maximum level via regular EXP, you may have the option to evolve your character to a higher rarity. In order to evolve the characters that you receive via playing adventures or characters that you get when you pull in the tavern, you may need some materials. And these various materials can be found easily in the event section of the adventure tab. Once you have the acquired materials needed to evolve your character, you'll be able to raise the character's rarity through evolution and upon evolving you'll be prompted to begin leveling the character's level again to level 99 to ensure that their stats are as high as they possibly can be. Alternatively, some characters in the game can perform super evolution. This is a rare type of evolution that can alter a character's appearance, their captain ability, or even their special, and these will require rare items known as crystal skulls, and they can be acquired through various means such as the Rayleigh's Bazaar, Kazuna Exchange, as well as unlockable quests. Super Evolution may be taxing, but the enhanced performance from characters will be worth the investment, allowing characters to become much more powerful than their predecessors. Next, let's go ahead and have a look at the unlock powers. So powers are one of the most integral components of powering up a character. These powers grant passive buffs and resistances throughout an adventure, and more characters in your crew that have powers unlocked, the greater the effect that these powers will have. Each character can have a varying amount of unlock powers. Some characters have up to five slots, whereas others may only have one, completely depending on the nature of the character. In order to gain access to the unlock powers, you must power up your character with one of the following two materials, the first of which being Forbidden Tomes. Typically, these are used to unlock powers on your character, and they can also grant 5,000 additional EXP as well, which can assist in leveling your characters up. You can also use same characters, and by using a same character, you'll be able to gain access to one unlock power. As for example, here you'll see that any Luffy can be fed to this Luffy right here in order to unlock a power on that character. In this crew example, all the characters have been given sufficient forbidden tomes into their given abilities to grant an array of additional boosts throughout the adventure. 
For example, the auto heal power is considered to be extremely strong, as at max boost it grants 1000 healing to the crew at the end of every single turn, allowing the crew to last longer in fights and to adequately stall for special charge times on your characters. For easier content, these powers typically are not required, however in more difficult content such as the Clash, Arena or Colosseums, you may want these leveled prior to attempting them. The next component we'll be looking at is special level. So raising a character's special level will reduce the amount of turns that it takes to charge their special to max throughout the adventure, meaning that your crew will have to stall less turns prior to boss battles, allowing your crew to clear these quests at a faster pace. Each character will require a differing amount of special level ups in order to get their special level charge maxed, and it can be as little as 3 special level ups, but it can be as many as 10 or even 15. 15 special level ups. In order to raise a character's special level, you can feed some varying materials to have a chance at raising their level. The first of which is characters with the same special name. So duplicate characters will share the same named special as the character that you wish to level. And this means that duplicate characters will have a slight chance of increasing your character's special level. You may also use manuals. These are rare items that have a slight chance of increasing the special level of your characters. There are manuals available for each typing that are available each day on a cycle, you may even find a secret rare absolute almighty manual which can guarantee the special level increase. Moving on, the next component we'll be looking at is going to be stats, otherwise known as the cotton candy power-up. You can even increase your character's base stats through the usage of the cotton candy power-ups. Cotton candy are item drops that you can pick up in certain quests and can also be obtainable via the Kizuna shop or the Rayleigh's Bazaar. When cotton candy is dropped, it will be automatically stored onto your account, so when you access the stats section of the power-up menu, you can use the sliders to distribute the candy to a given stat. And each type of candy actually increases a different stat on a character and it scales differently depending on what stat that you select. So the Cotton Candy HP power-up states that it will provide 5 HP points to that character. Whereas the Cotton Candy attack power-up states that it will grant an additional 2 points of attack to that character. And finally the Cotton Candy recovery power-up will grant 1 additional recovery point to that character. You can even increase the amount of maximum cotton candy that you can feed to your characters, and this is achievable via the Gather Island located on the home screen of One Piece Treasure Cruise. By spending rumble tickets, you can increase the ranks of your monuments, which in turn allows more cotton candy to be fed into each individual stat, increasing the overall power of the characters in your character box. The next component of power-up is support effects. Some characters in One Piece Treasure Cruise have access to something called a support effect and can be attached to other characters in the edit crew section of the crew. These support effects can grant an array of useful beneficial effects throughout an adventure ranging from simple statistical increases to debuff removals and even slot changing effects. To increase a character's support effect to the max level of 5, you will need to feed the character certain materials, and these materials can include the Proof of Friendship, an item that can be dropped in certain adventures that grant a slight chance of increasing the character's support effect. And if you're lucky enough to find the Proof of Friendship Ultimate Bond, you can even guarantee the chance of leveling your character's support effect. You may also use characters that share the same evolution tree, and by using characters that share the same evolution tree, the, those characters are going to have the same support effect as the character that you wish to level. So luckily, these duplicate characters will guarantee a support effect to be raised by one level. Now we're going to be taking a look at Limit Break and potential abilities. So Limit Break is a complex system in One Piece Treasure Cruise, however learning it will allow your characters to become vastly more powerful and even gain access to new unique abilities to assist you in clearing future adventures. So Limit Breaking begins once your character reaches level 99 and then accessing the Limit Break button via the power up menu. You'll be able to let your characters gain further stat increases, new crewmate effects, special 
charge decrease, and the elusive potential effects. By tapping the plus button next to the section called mastery points, you can feed your character training drinks, which levels a character's mastery, and once this mastery has been risen, you are now ready to begin limit breaking your characters. So if you have the available guiding stone materials, you will see the limit break path light up and you can select which nodes you want to access for that one character. These guiding stones and training drinks as well can be dropped and exchanged in the treasure map game mode, which is active during set times per month. So ensure you check the in-game information to learn what times treasure map are going to be active so you can continue to limit break your characters. Now certain nodes on the limit break path will unlock a character's potential abilities and these can grant abilities during a quest such as allowing your character's normal attacks to bypass enemy barriers you can also recover HP whenever you tap a perfect you'll be able to boost their attack if you receive damage and even more that you can explore by limit breaking more characters now these potential abilities can also be leveled up and you can raise the levels of your potential abilities through a couple of methods one of the methods is by using characters that share the same evolution tree so characters that share the same evolution tree can be used to guarantee the level up on one of their available potential abilities you may also use tablets which are extremely rare items that have a chance to level one ability of that character you are able to get these drops in the treasure map and the kizuna shop so be sure to check the in-game notice to know when to expect these event periods Moving on, the next component of powering up is going to be leveling up your rumble abilities and your rumble specials. So there is an auto battle game mode besides the normal tap battles in One Piece Treasure Cruise, and that is Pirate Rumble. This game mode will be further explored in a future episode in the tutorial series, so be sure to look out for it. In Pirate Rumble, there are some characters that will have access to rumble abilities and rumble specials. And in order to increase the level of the rumble specific abilities, we will need to use scroll. These rare items come in each of the five types and can be in up to three different rarities with the varying levels of Rumble EXP given to that character during power up. You can get your hands on the Rumble Scrolls through Kizuna Clash and also requests from Chopper Man. Once scrolls has been fed to the desired character, you can use the slide bars to determine whether you wish the rumble EXP to be distributed into their rumble special or their rumble ability. So the rumble special is the special that will occur during combat during pirate rumble, and this can include providing buffs or debuffs, this can as well as do damage to the enemy teams. Whereas the rumble ability is the passive effect that will be active during combat, and these are vital in providing stat increase to your team to allow pirate rumble specials to be more effective and with your character's rumble effects leveled you'll be even more prepared to take on more opposing teams in the pirate rumble game mode with all of this in mind, you should now know all the various different ways you can improve and enhance your character throughout the game to get them ready for combat or whatever is thrown your way. So to ensure that you keep up to date with the One Piece Treasure Cruise tutorial series by following the other content creators that are creating other episodes of this series to help you on your way. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video today. And if you guys did enjoy it, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down down below but on that guys i will see you guys within the next video